remember that in simple linear regression, we have beta zero, that's our intercept, and beta one, that's the slope. But we're not limited to a function of just one variable. We could have a function of many variables, and we're just going to make a, a linear combination um, with kind of slope terms for each one. So we're still going to have an intercept, but now we're going to have a bunch of different betas. So we could have beta 1, beta 2, beta 3. Uh, apparently I messed up my notation here. This should be beta p. Um, and so you can have as many as you'd like, as many predictors as you want. Uh, p is the number of predictors. And then I could have that number of x's as inputs. So several things are going to change as we move from simple linear regression to multiple linear regression. And one of the things that's going to change is the interpretation sentence. So our sentence uh, so far has been for a one unit increase in the explanatory variable. We would expect or the model predicts, we would expect a beta one hat unit increase or decrease in the response. And what's gonna change now is we're going to add on to this sentence and say holding all else constant or we can write out uh, the other variables that are gonna be held constant. So we're gonna think about a particular beta sub i. I'm gonna switch not just beta one. And, uh, and then I'm gonna put in the holding all else constant. We could use the rest of the variables in there. So that's one thing that's gonna change in between uh, simple linear regression and multiple regression. And then uh, we're gonna be thinking about much more complex situations as we move on in this course. So I wanna start with the, the most simple possible example, where instead of just one predictor, we've got two predictors. And so I'm gonna say that x1 is a quantitative variable, so just like we've been doing in simple linear regression, and x2 is gonna be a categorical variable. And this is gonna be a binary variable, um, an indicator variable with just two binary options, zero and one. And uh, my favorite binary example is whether you like your coffee cold or hot. That's a pretty binary decision. There aren't many people who just like their beverages tepid. Maybe you like iced coffee or maybe you like hot coffee, but you probably don't like it right in the middle. So if I'm gonna think about the fitted regression equation with the hats, then I would have uh, y hat, my predicted value, is going to be beta 0 hat, so just like normal, uh, plus beta 1 hat, x1, plus beta 2 hat times x2. So we're just making the equation a little bit more complex. But then, because there's only two possibilities for x2, we can think about the equation both ways. So I'm going to think about the y hat given that x2 is equal to 0. So let's think about that. So I've got y hat is equal to beta 0 hat plus beta 1 hat x1 uh, plus beta 2 hat times 0. But anything times 0 is 0, so then I could actually just erase that term. And then I could think about y hat when x2 is equal to 1, and that would be y hat is equal to beta 0 hat plus beta 1 hat x1 plus beta 2 hat times 1, and anything times 1 is itself, so then I've just got uh, beta 2 hat. But now I've got two terms that don't have x's, and I can actually combine those together. So I'm going to put them together to make kind of a, a bigger intercept. So I'm going to have beta 0 hat plus beta 2 hat in parentheses plus beta 1 hat x1. So what you'll notice about this is that the, uh, the part with the quantitative predictor stays the same. We have the same slope in both versions of the equation. The only thing that's different is the intercept. So for the one where it's zero, we just have our regular beta zero intercept. 
and for the one where it is one, then our intercept just has this additional beta two hat um, added onto it. And so people will call this uh, version of a multiple regression model where we have these two predictors and one of them is categorical. They'll call it a parallel slopes model. And that's because if you were gonna visualize it as a scatter plot, maybe we'll have two different colors of points here. We could have our, our green line and our blue line, trying to make them as parallel as I can make them. Uh, and uh, this value right here, uh, let's call that beta zero hat plus beta two hat. And that would make this one down here, beta zero hat. Uh, but they're both gonna have the same slope, they're parallel lines. So let's think about this with a real example. Um, this is a restaurant example where we're trying to predict the price of a restaurant um, based on a service rating. And so the service could be rated apparently from 14 to 24, maybe out of 25, I'm not exactly sure. Um, and the price is I think in dollars for an average entree, um, it goes from $20 up to more than $60. And this data is from New York City um, and it looks like as the, as the service rating goes up, we would expect the price to go up as well. That probably makes sense. So we could look at this in a simple linear regression case where we'd have y hat, or actually I'm gonna do price hat is equal to negative 11.98, let's say, plus 2.82 times service. Okay, so for a one unit increase in the service rating, we'd expect the price of the meal to go up by $2.82. Um, and this is one of those cases where you probably don't want to interpret the intercept, because that means if the service rating was zero, we'd expect the meal to cost negative $12. And of course you can't have a meal that costs negative $12 and the service rating didn't get anywhere near zero. So we wouldn't want to interpret that. So that's simple linear regression. And then we could do a uh, multiple linear regression by adding in another variable. So there is a variable east, which is whether or not this restaurant is east of Fifth Avenue. So east, if it's zero, uh, it is not east. And if it's one, it is east. Um, and then we could write out our, um, our equation. So like we saw with the simple linear regression example where I was using just one categorical variable, I was trying to predict GPA based on class year, R is kind of gonna append um, a little hint onto the end of a categorical variable's name. So the variable that I plugged in was just called east. But what I see in the, um, uh, in the output table is east one, which is telling me which, uh, which version of the variable is being shown in my table and which is getting baked into the intercept. So I'm gonna write out this equation. So I'm gonna say um, price hat is equal to negative 11.66 plus 2.77 times service uh, plus 1.0 six times east. And then I could do the same thing that I just did with my generic equation, where I'm gonna say uh, price hat, given that east is equal to zero, then it's gonna be negative 11.66 plus 2.77 times service. And then 1.06 times zero is zero, so we don't have to add that on there. And we could also do the one for price hat given east equal one, and that would be negative 11.66 plus 2.77 times service plus 1.06 times one, anything times one is itself. And then I could combine together my pieces of the intercept. So I could do negative 11.66 plus 1.06 plus 2.77 times service. 
and now I've got negative 10.6 plus 2.77 service. So those are my two versions of the equation. I've got the one for east equals zero, and I've got the one for east equal one. Um, so this is something that I might ask you to do on an exam, is write out the two versions of the regression line for the two uh, categories, or maybe there's more than two categories for a particular variable. And we could think about this again in terms of the picture. Um, here I have my two parallel lines on my ggplot, one for uh, zero and one for one. You can see they both have the same slope but slightly different intercepts. It looks like um, restaurants that are east of Fifth Avenue have slightly higher prices on average. So um, if I was thinking about a place with a service rating of 18, uh, if it was um, east equals zero, it would be slightly lower than if it was east equal one. So then that brings me back to the idea of sentences. Uh, we kind of saw the categorical variable sentence when we were doing the GPA example, but I'm just gonna do it again in the multiple linear regression context. So I'm gonna say compared to the reference group, um, we would expect the value of the response variable to be beta i hat units, and it's either going to be higher or lower. Uh, and then because we're doing multiple regression, we're going to say holding all else constant. So we no longer have that for a one unit increase because it's a categorical variable, it can't increase by one unit. Um, even if you're thinking of it as zero and one, it, it really can't go up by, by one. It can only do that once. It's not like a slope where it can keep going up and up and up. So let's do it in the context of this restaurant example. So I'm gonna say compared to, and then the reference group, that's the one that's baked into the intercept. That's the one that doesn't appear in the table. So one appears in the table, that means that zero is baked into the intercept. And that's usually how it works for binary versions. The zero gets baked in and the one is shown. So compared to restaurants west of Fifth Avenue, uh, we would expect the price um, at restaurants east of Fifth Avenue to be, and then we need to find our beta, uh, beta i, so 1.06, 1.06, and it's in dollars, dollars higher holding the service rating constant. So compared to the ones that aren't east of Fifth Avenue, we would expect the ones that are east of Fifth Avenue to have a one point or a dollar and six cent higher uh, price holding the service rating constant. So if we're just looking along a particular service rating, um, if we're holding that constant, we would expect the ones that are west uh, to be a little bit lower than the ones that are east at every single value of uh, service rating.